and a lot of artists that were doing a lot of great things and and um and i appreciate that because they just kept it going because that's the power of us that's the power of our folks i mean we are just inventive you know necessity is the mother of invention we're gonna find a way the job sometimes is to change their mind i'm, I'm a clown he's gonna go ahead and create something over here Coming up next on another act, I sit down with actor Gary Dorden and we talk about his journey from a different world to the worlds of crime, thriller, and drama. It almost feels fitting that the word redemption is in the title of your new movie that is out at the top of a new year in the aftermath of, of 2020. Everyone is looking for redemption in some way, shape, or form. What does that word mean to you personally, Gary? Well, there's so... There's so many uh, meanings for that word for me. I mean, yeah. we are on this journey. So the thing with my family is, is we've all been just always getting together and, and really supporting each other's careers. So, you know, our careers do this thing sometimes. And the more that we talk about it, the more that we, we get together and we, we pray about it and, and we, we get the family together and, and we, we plan the future is the more that this film came into focus and it was like yeah of course redemption day absolutely yeah what made you want to do it when the director the writer director hitcham hajiz brought the product to my representatives i was interested in an action film but i was more interested in the fact that the main character had a past and had a history the PTSD that a lot of soldiers that I know, people in the force, people that have been in the armed services that carry with them and that when they go back into civilian life, it, it makes it a lot more difficult to, to interact with people. I thought that'd be a great opportunity for me to honor some of these men and women that I've met and I've worked with over the years in the service industry, uh, Navy yeah. SEALs, Rangers, Marines, and uh, two in particular I modeled this character after because I just, really honored, uh, I wanted to honor the way they, they handled themselves working in civilian life. They often talked about how it was after they got not back into civilian life, how it was, how difficult it was to be working around people who didn't carry the same principles that had been instilled in them during their time on the force. And some of them went back on the force and would do covert ops or do private company missions and stuff like that because they didn't feel that they, they they didn't feel that people had their back. So I wanted to, I wanted to craft this character as an ode to them. That you're looking for at this point in your career, what are you finding that you gravitate towards? You know, and I guess in 2021 and beyond, you know, what is it that you're looking for? Well, one thing is definitely freedom to create. Um, I've always looked for that. I color outside the lines a bit. I work with music, I work with theater, I work with film, TV. I just like creating. I don't think there's any boundaries. I, I see, I've been staying over in France for a few years and I see it often spoken from uh, some of their artists over there that they, that they feel the industry doesn't allow them to be multi-hyphenates. And that's sort of what we come from. It's our heritage mm -hmm. as artists in America. The people that I really admire, like the Gordon Parks of this world, and you know the Debbie Allens of this world, they don't they don't have any boundaries. So, yeah, uh, it's more on that line: directing, yeah. and producing, writing, acting. I'm working on the dancing part, but you know, just music, theater, the arts. It's just it's, I'm passionate about it. It's what I decided that I want to do when. I was in my teen years and it's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm surprised that I'm working because a lot really? of people do, you know, yeah, because there was, because of the way I also looked and the way I was perceived in the industry for such a long time, it just took a while for me to get my way around to figure out uh, exactly what I could do in the industry. And mm. I'm discovering that it's pretty much anything that I really want to do. Mm. at this age in my life that I'm at now. And now there's a lot of other actors who finally resemble someone like me and that we're, we're filling out a large, we have a, such a diaspora of uh, you know actors of color. There's such a beautiful rainbow that we have mm. to fill out. I'm looking forward to 
storytelling that is not just about the narrative of the interruption of our history. I'm interested in the narrative uh, because we are the creators of sciences, the creators of technologies. I'm interested yeah. in those, those stories to be told. The interruption that happened when we got to America, there's a lot of stories there as well, but I'm interested in going further back and even tying them in with the history that we that we discovered when we when we got here to the Americas and the way that we got here. What types of things were you being told early on in your career about the aesthetics? Because this is something that we spend a lot of time um, hearing from from female actors talking about limitations and how people view them and what their perceptions are. But what was that experience like for you? What were you hearing? It's funny because I sort of have the opposite. Swing. It's very similar because uh, what happens as an actor is you have to work very hard not to be objectified. You have to work very hard to give your characters life and meaning, but also give them more than one dimension. Your job sometimes is to change their mind. Mm -hmm. With an actress, you're, you're dealing with a lot of uh, male toxicity in the industry. Mm -hmm. Understandably so. Now I find that, and I've always found that, I've got hired from women, but sometimes it, I have to work very hard to, to give them more than just a pretty face because that's what they're expecting or that's what they've written in, a one-dimensional character. Now, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned uh, Debbie Allen. So you know I'm gonna kind of go there a little bit. We, we first okay. really got to meet you uh, in a different world way back when in the 90s and it's a situational comedy but you found most of your success in in the thriller in the drama in films like redemption day why do you think that this is a an area or genre that really um works for you and works as well as it does for you well i do love comedy and i started in comedy and i was doing uh theater in new york and i was doing um you know musical comedy in new york and debbie allen tapped me and i sent her some things that i was doing and, and that's the sitcom. But uh, I think any actor really wanted to get some juicy roles into to drama. So that's what I started to gravitate towards is trying to find dramatic role, roles. And that's what I'm known for now. So I think that a lot of the directors and producers will try to hire me for it because mm. they think I'm good at drama. But yeah. to be honest with you, I'm, I'm a clown. So I like to joke around. As much as I can. When I was on CSI, I would crack jokes all day long. I mean, if I wasn't having the crew cracking up, then that was a bad day for me. It started to blur the lines when I started to do it in front of the camera too. But I would oftentimes hear, yo, Gary, this is a serious thing because you please get serious. And I'd go, you know what? Real cops, they make fun of, you know, the situation all the time. Do you think that we're going to see you walk back into that space at some point soon where we're going to see you doing something that is explicitly funny, you know, as opposed to what I, you really have been giving that, us? I'm on that pathway, you know, I, I'm just being, I'm taking interesting things. And the thing that I'm here doing right now, I'm in Atlanta, we're shooting uh, First Wife's Club. And I'm working with Michelle Boutel, who is absolutely hilarious. She's She's hilarious. My God, it's really hard because it, at the at the end of the day, my stomach hurts from laughing at her one liner <laughs> that she just makes up like that. And it's great being around that energy, um, mm. and I'm looking forward to 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 doing that more. So uh, yeah. I think, yeah. Well, you're not just an actor; you're also a musician. How did 2020 um, maybe? have you tap into that creative part of yourself? It's really interesting, but at the same time, I have discovered more new music in 2020 than I think I haven't discovered in a long time. I've discovered yeah. more music because people were in the lab, they were creating, and that was a good time to do it. It's, oh, wait a minute, you mean I have to, I have to stay at home? Okay, home yeah. studios were the bomb, 2020. Yeah. A lot of artists that were doing a lot of great things, and, and um, and I appreciate that because they just kept it going because that's the power of us. That's the power of our folks. I mean, we are just inventive, you know? Yeah. Necessity is the mother of invention. We're going to find a way. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it. Gary, it was so great talking to you today. Uh, continued success, TV, movies, and music. So great to talk to you. Blessing to talk to you too. Another.